Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I have something a little bit different for you. We're going to be looking at the Vox Edit software and I'll be showing you some of the basics of it. It's completely free to use and it will allow players to create, sell and buy assets in the future. It is still in beta so there will be changes to it so bear that in mind. Um, and I am one of uh, many artists that are working on pre-launch assets currently, so I'm going to just show you a few little things on it. If you have any questions, don't forget to put them down in the comments below and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. I would really, really appreciate that. I'm also very new to this. I've only been doing Vox Edit since I want to say June, July time. But I found it very easy to use and it's just, it's very enjoyable. So this is the site to be able to find it and download it. So go on sandbox.game. This, you'll be able to find a lot of information about what Sandbox is all about. So this is what it looks like when you open it up. You've got news, modeler, which is where you'll create your little models. Animator is when we look at rigging and putting things together uh, block is for if you're making just blocks like stone blocks or sand blocks things like that and templates have all the templates that you can use and edit these pieces so if you want a full avatar template we can go into that and edit that which will also be done in another video i will have a whole video on how you can edit these templates, recolor them, make them however you want. But I've got some handy ones over here and it just means that these these can help you in creating what you want without needing to know how to set up the rigging and getting that all correct because you can edit these, you can change how they look a little bit. Um you know, like take the medium mammal. Yes, it's a wolf to start with, but you can probably change that up, make it look a little bit different, chop it down, add uh, bits to it. But we're just going to be looking in the modeler. When you go on here, you want to create new assets and name, name your file. So I'm just going to call it random for now. Save it. Oh, wait, we have a random. Okay. Uh, YouTube. Perfect. And this is what we have to start with. So it gives us a 32 by 32 by 32, which is a meter, I believe, for them. Um, it's roughly knee height on the humans. Um, the, the normal humans are roughly 64 height. So we've got our axes here. And so... Um, is our tool so we can pop this here this is a mirror so you pop it down the middle and it will just copy what you want right there so our first one is um create so this will give us blocks wherever we want um and we've got a pencil tool and then we've got a line tool and you can just draw a straight line and as you can see it's mirroring it wherever we draw it it's mirroring it to the other side. We can also pop this one in. So if you want to make like a, a square, very simply, you can just do it that way. This is the eraser tool. So on the box, you can just click on the erase and it will erase the one that you are clicking on. You can also hold down and select multiples like that. Just click and drag, click and drag. And then we have a face tool. So you click and it will start deleting anything on that face that is attached to each other. So uh, as you can see, let's just do this. As you can see, this one's on the side. If I delete this, that stays there. So we can delete all of this and this bit will stay put and do that. And then this is a flood tool, so it will just take everything that is attached to it, even the side ones. So nice, nice delete tool. Honestly, I use the flood tool more for colouring, which is our paint mode. So if we select pink and we go into our block, 
we can click here and just drag out. Nice and simple. And then to paint, we grab the paint tool. We can either do block or if we wanted to fill the whole, well, if we wanted to fill the whole thing, we flood it like that. If we wanted to do one side, we can do that. And if we just wanted a few blocks, maybe add something over there. Do it that way. This is our little eyedropper. Most people know how eyedroppers work. You select, it will automatically choose the color you want and do it that way. So you can paint like that or you can choose a color, go over to create mode and you can start popping voxels up. Now there's no way to have a random uh, block just floating. However, so let's say for example, I want to bring this up like that. We would choose the face tool. It will just bring this up, grab our eraser tool and go on to just block and delete it that way. And now we have a floating cube. Pivot is, uh, our pivot is more for if you're uh, rigging it up. So if you want to get a rig set up, it's important to have the pivot tool. Uh, it's where the asset will be placed, it's, it's centering. So if when you go to want to rotate something a certain way, you would want it, well, you'd want it to be on the floor and you'd want to be able to rotate it from the middle. But what you do need to remember is when you've created an asset, not that this is, you want to be clicking on trim volumes. So that will just uh, make your area as close as possible. So it will trim it right down to where it is. And then that's where you can move this. So it is exactly in the middle. So you'd want it like half of nine uh, 29. Um, this arrow, right. So down here, this arrow is pointing to the front. This is the way your asset will be facing. So that is the front. This one is you can select you can select a bunch right there and maybe move them out one. Let's unselect that. And then, put, so you can just drag a whole section outwards. This will reduce the size of the detail. So you see where we've got these one, one blocks right there? We reduce it and it takes away all those small bits. We can also make it smaller and uh, we can also enlarge it and then start adding details on like that. And um, as you'll notice, the width of the voxels actually increases when you do that. So it won't add what you've deleted back, but it will increase the amount of voxels. So a good way to do it is have an idea of how large you want a section. And I suggest trimming it down. Up here, you can put length, like how um, long your height. I can't remember what the maximum is. They have increased it. They did increase how how large you could have it. And also, this is um, these tools will do edges so you won't see any of the edges it's, it's a good indicate um, indication of how it will look in game so that you won't see like the dark edges when we do it like that this one will give you more of sections of color and this one is everything is cubed up to the smallest voxel when it comes to deleting certain areas um you, if you use the face tool, it will just delete whatever's touching of that color. So you can pop in like that. And maybe you want to then fill it with a different color. So you uh, click your block tool and you'd start filling it in like that. So I can see, see the level of detail. You can also add to your palettes. So you do that, just add another color add another color. You've got your tool over here so you can scroll through and just work, work that way. Also, something that 
I absolutely love is this little tool here. So if I click, you'll see there's a little star on it. And we're just going to do that. So it makes it like shiny neon color. And also you can change it there. So you can make it a bit brighter. We'll just do another one. We'll have a nice blue. Maybe a little bit darker. There we go. So if you want, may, maybe you want, you know, something with some evil, evil red eyes glowing at you. You can add those just on onto the eyes when creating it. But it does do that for all of those colours. So it's not like if you take it off, it takes the shine off of it. So it's set to that. So if you wanted one without it, you would click to copy. Um, you, well, you click to add a new one and it automatically copies from the one previous. And that's the one you can then use to have some normal, normal red to it. So this resets your view to the, the starting view. So if you've scrolled in a bit too far or you've got a little bit lost or you're down here and you can't quite figure out how to get back, just pre press reset. Uh, to move around, hold the middle button to move like this on your mouse. Scroll in, scroll out. Use right click to turn. These flip them round like that this will flip the design so it just rotates them different ways so if you've realized you you've made it incorrectly and you need the back of an item to be on the wall let's say um let's let's just make something really quickly okay so this is this is our picture frame that we've we've obviously not gone into much detail so we'll we'll trim it down to where it's at. Actually, personally, wait, wait. Okay, so we want our picture frame facing that way. We want it facing outward. But what we would also want to do is, because it is a picture frame, we would want it to automatically snap to the wall. So instead of having the pivot point in the middle. Um, of the item we would actually want to have it at the back so you'd want it on zero and this in the middle as well so on 15 and then we take our pivot point off so when if that got uploaded to the gallery and you put it in a game then the pivot point would automatically be on the back so it would be easy to pop it onto a wall rather than you know, having to play about with it because in the game maker you can rotate and move objects up and down and stuff like that. However, you wouldn't want to be going through that much hassle. You want it to be as easy for a person to use as possible. Is there anything else I've missed? For a sec yes, there is. Okay, these arrows up here. So to give you an example, I'm just going to make everything just a little bit bigger. Basically, these arrows act as um, as being able to move what we've created. So it will take what we've actually made, everything on here, all the voxels on here, will then move depending. So if we wanted to move it on the, if we wanted to move it on the Z axis, we would press these. If we wanted to move it up and down, you can press up and down maybe you needed to add something let's say you wanted to extend extend this so we'll grab that and just like give it a little extension and we go to trim it and we go back to our pivots the pivot is set from where we last had it placed rather than at the bottom Okay, so I want to apologise for having myself in the middle of the screen for the whole of this video. I didn't realise that it hadn't transitioned me to the side. Um, so my bad, apologies.
I will be uploading other videos. I think in our next video, we'll have a little look at an animator. I will also be doing actual artwork videos as well, where I'll create an asset and upload how I've created certain assets um, on, on this. This was just basic introduction. Maybe even if you leave a comment down below of maybe a theme or an item you want me to try and create, then yes, I would definitely be up for that. I also stream on DLive, so check me out on DLive if you get a chance. There should be a link somewhere on my channel. In fact, I'll link down below in the description. There'll be a link down below. Anyway, thank you ever so much. Um, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, leave a comment, do whatever you got to do. And thank you ever so much. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. I will see you next time. Goodbye.